So in this video, I wanted to make a few points on work done and how you include it within the work energy principle. Okay? So, first of all, work is only done when there is movement. So let's say I am holding up this tub and it is remaining stationary. Okay? There is no work being done by any of the vertical forces, so the weight, or by the normal reaction force in this case, um, because there is no movement. So if I move it, let's just say from side to side, there is still no work being done on the vertical forces, or by the vertical forces, I should say. say. So either by the weight or by the normal reaction force, because work is only done by the component of the force in the direction of the movement. So if your forces are perpendicular to the direction of the movement, then no work is being done by them. Now the work energy principle must include the work done by all relevant forces other than the weight. Okay. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, if you've got the weight and you wanted to work, calculate the work done by the weight, we know that the work done is going to be equal to the force times the distance. Okay, so let, let me put this as work done, so WD. Okay, so if we're talking about the weight, then I'll use capital W for the weight. That will be your force times by the distance uh, over which it travels, okay, which may well be a certain height. And of course, W is m times g, so weight is m times g, and that's being multiplied by h, and here we have the formula for gravitational potential energy. Okay, so actually the weight, or the work done by the weight, is included already within the work energy principle. So the work energy prin principle says that the initial gravitational potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy plus or minus any work done is equal to the final gravitational potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. Okay, so we, if you included the work done by the gravity here, you would essentially be including it twice because we've already got it here. Here's your MGH, which is your weight times h, which is your force times distance, okay? So this is the work done by the gravity, already included. Now, if, for example, we had a block that was being pulled uh, horizontally uh, by a force, let's say, 30 newtons at an angle of 20 degrees, and let's say that there's a frictional force as well of uh, 5 newtons, okay? Then when we talk about the work done, so let's say it's over um, 10 metres, say. So it travels 10 metres. Then what we need to do is include the component of this force in the direction of travel. So we're looking at the horizontal component. So that will be 30 cosine 20. So this is your force times your distance. So we would have plus the 30 cosine 20 times by your distance 10. And plus because we're adding energy in, it's being dragged along uh, in that direction. But you've got this constant frictional force of 5 newtons, okay? So that's going to be taking energy out. And so you've got the work done is this bit that's going in. And remember, we're just using the component of that force. Take away the frictional force. And that might be also, there might be an uh, air resistance as well. So you could have another force that was air resistance. So another one newton, and then you could have take away one lot of ten. Okay. So each of the forces in the direction of motion must be taken account of uh, when you include when you're um, adding or subtracting the work done in the work energy principle. 
Okay, so hopefully that clears up some of the concepts around work done. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start looking at A-level maths mechanics problems that can be solved using an energy method, so using the work energy principle.